How many people do you know who've made it into the Guinness Book of World Records? We're here with Joe Franklin, who's listed in the Guinness as the most prolific interviewer of all times. Joe, how does it feel to be on the other side of the mic? Well, it's fun. I've uh, been interviewed a few times through the years by uh, Johnny Carson, by uh, Tom, uh, who's the fellow who did the Tomorrow Show all night long? Tom Snyder. And I've been interviewed by, I guess, by David Letterman, if you but never anybody as pretty as you. So this, uh, <laughs> this is uh, kind of a first. And it's a good feeling. Oh, thank you, Joe. How many interviews have you done? I have done on my Joe Franklin TV show, which ran for 43 years, 500,000 interviews. I did uh, 28,000 episodes or installments of the Joe Franklin show, which, as you mentioned, uh, Chris was in the Guinness Book of World Records. And... Uh, I uh, saw a list recently of people who never did a talk show. It said in this magazine, it said Charlie Chaplin never did one. It said Cary Grant never did one. It said John Wayne never did one. It said uh, James Cagney never did one. It said Clark Gable. Never... I had them all. The ones that were listed in that, book as, in that magazine article as never having appeared as a guest on a TV talk show, I had them all. So it shows you the press is not always right. You know, uh... Between your television show, which aired during prime time and then also after midnight, you actually almost um, invented the celebrity interview. But in the beginning, it must have been difficult to coax uh, some of these uh, famous people onto your show. How did you do it? Well, you're right about that. I was waiting around for Marconi to invent the tube. And then I, <laughs> then I went on TV. And uh, at the beginning, at the beginning, it was hard. I had a call upon my dear friends. Eddie Cantor came with me. Uh, a lady named Fanny Hurst who wrote Imitation of Life and a lot of big magazines, a lot of big books. Uh, I had uh, some old-time recording stars. But after a while, the momentum, I was the first pure, organic, from-the-bones TV talk show. And then, then they started coming to me. I, I, I gave the first exposure ever to people like uh, Jack Lemmon when he was down in my basement on Channel 7. Barbara Streisand was my singer 40 times. I uh, gave the first exposure to... Uh, Woody Allen, hey. Bette, Bette Midler, Al Pacino, Dustin. What Huff. about uh, Billy Crystal? Billy Crystal was, uh, uh, did a takeoff on me on Saturday Night Live <laughs> for four years. And uh, the first time I saw Billy doing me, you know what I said? I said, one of us is lousy. <laughs> and uh, I gave the first exposure to Bill Cosby, Tiny Tim, uh, Eddie Murphy, Michael Jackson, five times with the Jackson family. Uh, well, do any of these stars come back after they've uh, finally made it? That's a really good question. Most of them, uh, Crystal, don't come back because I, it's, 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 I, mean, I didn't mean to get so heavy, and, but it's, maybe it's human nature, but because I symbolize, I represent to them the times they were broke. And when they see me, they don't want to be reminded of those days, so they, 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 they don't come back. Well, Bill Cosby is one of the few. Weird Al Yankovic, he, and who else came back? Uh, uh, what's his name, the fellow? Had the big record tie, the yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. What's his name? You know, the big star. Oh, I remember that. Wait. We're both not getting a senior moment. It, it'll come to me. Oh, Glenn Campbell. No, not Glenn Campbell. Not Glenn Tony Campbell. Bennett? To no, no, Tony Bennett? No, Tony. Uh, Orlando. Tony, Orlando. Tony Orlando. Yeah. That man gets a lollipop. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> he, right. yeah, that came from the cameraman, Tony Spala. Knows, Thank you, Tony. He knows his onions. He was living near a grocery store, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but most of, them, most of them don't come. But I, look, I had them. You know, I don't, I'm not looking for any thank yous. But I, I had great interviews and great... Uh, I gave the first exposure to uh, to uh, Billy Crystal. So, you know, how can you miss, right? Well, I doubt if your uh, interviews, you became a crack interviewer overnight. How did your technique evolve? Well, that's a good question, too, because, you know, whenever you watch a TV talk show, a major TV talk show, Crystal, somebody says, how do you feel? There's a big sign out there on a the car. It says, fine, everything is rehearsed. I think I was the only TV host in history who didn't have pre-production meetings, had no script. My program was completely extemporaneous, completely unrehearsed, ad lib. I figure if you're having dinner in a restaurant, you don't rehearse the dinner, the dialogue. You just sit down and eat and talk, so I just let it flow. I didn't even meet or greet my guests in the green room before the show. I would just do the show right on the air, cold ad lib spontaneous and just let it let it fly let it wing <laughs> oh you're a little better than me on that and and what do you think are key factors in doing a good interview well the main ingredient in longevity in a field like mine where the, where the mortality rate is so staggering you know i've seen about while i was on tv crystal it must be about about 500 or 600 talk show hosts came and went during that period the main factor i think is sincerity sincerity 
And once you learn to fake that, then you got it made, you know? So, <laughs> no, but on a serious note, I think the trick is looking at people's eyes. And uh, I guess you know, on radio, which I'm doing now, just radio, you can't really look in their eyes. You look into the microphone and visualize that you're staring at the audience. But I think that uh, the main thing is to be what I think I was all those years on TV, warm, organic, from the bones, not synthetic, not plastic, but, you know, Joe Franklin, lovable, huggable, kissable, and stuff like that. Uh, bringing up radio, what you're on WOR 710 and also Bloomberg News. You want to tell us when we can uh, catch your show? Well, I'm on WOR all night weekends from about 11 o'clock at night till 5 o'clock in the morning with the Joe Franklin Memory Lane Show. No, on Bloomberg Radio, WBBR, 11.30 a.m., seven days a week, day and night with my little nostalgia reports. And I do a lot of after-dinner speaking, banquet appearances, and I produce commercials, and I'm producing a couple of movies now in North Carolina. And I uh, do, I'm doing only what I like. I'm, I'm, I'm semi-retarded. I mean, semi-retired. <laughs> well, you know, uh, for our audience, uh, Joe can be seen in talent in motion, along with yours truly. Uh, Joe's on page 18, and would you believe I picked up a copy, and I'm on page 19. So linked, it was, <laughs> yes, that's sort of how I uh, concreted, I felt, the interview with Joe. I called up Joe and said, hey, we're on the same page with you. Give me an interview, Joe, here. I like that word concreted, like 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 solidified, right? Like, like concrete. <laughs> Size, like like comes together right well you know I also want to say that Joe has gone from the dragnet dragnet era dragnet, in, better, right? dragnet, <laughs> dragnet era into the internet era and he is um, has his own website he is in cyberspace with uh, www.joefranklin.com what can be seen on your website well we show nostalgia quizzes we show old photographs some of the memorabilia we might be selling eventually but the main thing I care about now is where we're sitting right now in the Joe Franklin Memory Lane restaurant on 45th Street and 8th Avenue. And it's packed every night, and we've got a lot of banquets and parties, and the food is great. I hope you'll have dinner with me one night soon, Crystal. Uh, yes, it's, it's a beautiful restaurant, and it's in the heart of the theater district, what, 45th and 8th Avenue. And it is decorated with all types of mementos from Joe's uh, private collection, also with a Hirschfeld caricature of, of Joe. and Jack, <laughs> Benny, Jack Benny's violin, Charlie Chaplin's hat over there, or his cane, and Tommy Dorsey's trombone up there. Cab Calloway's hat there in the corner, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And and we have continuous vintage of uh, Joe's television shows, and <laughs> and you know from uh, my script uh, consultant, Mr. Robert Moss, he he had a question for you. He said on your website that you um, also have a TV quizzes, but his question uh, uh, to you is an old an Al Jolson uh, story. Who was the vaudeville performer who introduced uh, the young Jolson to show business? That was played, I believe, by uh, was it William Frawley? Oh. No, no, I'm on the right track. Steve Martin, Steve by, Martin but was, uh, but played, played by William Demarest. Play, played by William Demarest, and and uh, and the two wives in the in the movie. In the first movie was Evelyn Keys, in the second movie was uh, Barbara Hale. And uh, with Larry Parks, of course, g g that movie broke the attendance record at Radio City Music Hall. It played there for 14 weeks. They had lines around the block, around the clock to see the Jolson story. And the sequel did it almost as well, called The Jolson Sings Again. And so far as I'm concerned, Jolson Sings Forever. He was my favorite. It's funny you would mention Jolson. I used, <laughs> I, I used to say that Al Jolson, on one knee, brought the entire world to its feet. Well, Robert Mar Moss, our uh, script consultant, he writes a lot for the New York, Los Angeles Times. He's a playwright, and he's written quite a few stories about Jolson, so Good he man. wanted me to throw that Good one man. to you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have been here with a man who's uh, been on radio, television, magazines, websites, has his own restaurant. Nice <laughs> <laughs> yes, a man who has interviewed many legends and in the process became a legend himself, Mr. Joe Franklin. Thank you so much, Joe. Listen, Thank I hope you. You'll invite me back and I want you to come on to so my shows. We'll do a recess.